Hey folks, I'm James. I'm 31 years old. I'm currently living in Tasmania. I moved to Australia from the UK three and a half years ago. I'm permanently in Australia, Tasmania. I'm probably here for another year, another year or so, um, just to get some money behind me because I was traveling, traveled for six months from Queensland to come down here. Uh, I met my partner in England who, and she's an Australian citizen. So we ended up moving over here. Um, we decided to leave Queensland. We were living in Brisbane. We decided to leave Queensland in our bus, which we've been living in for a couple of years now, and um, to travel around Australia. We got as far as Tasmania and we decided to stay here for a while um, just to enjoy it. It's, it's, we love it here, like it's so good. And um, we wanted to save some more money so we even in a year's time we can leave and continue our trip around Australia. Um, I work in the building and construction industry here in Tassie. Um, I did a few years studying carpentry at college in England. And then when I moved over here, just, just picked up the same kind of work. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going pretty good, really. I love it down here. My, as a youngster, I like, my dad was always moving from different jobs. So, so the whole family was moving around, you know? And, um, and then when my parents split, when I was probably about, must've been about 11 years old, they were living in different parts of the country. Um, my mum would be living in like in the town. So I'd be living mostly with my mum in the town, going to school and whatever. And then I'd be traveling on a train to go and spend time with my dad. And then as soon as I, as soon as I left school, as soon as I left school, I, I just wanted to leave, to be honest with you. And, and I never really got around to going traveling like in my early twenties, you know? Like I didn't do the, the typical travel experience. Um, I was always like in a long-term relationship. So things just didn't go that way. I, I actually um, tried to get into the military for one of the reasons was so I could travel and, and see the world kind of thing. But um, that didn't work out too good. Didn't, didn't go to plan. So, um, yeah, I didn't actually get the travel bug until... When I go, I, I went. My sister lived lived in Kenya for a while, so I went over there. I think that was probably the first kind of like experience I had where I realised that I really, really wanted to go travelling, you know. And then, um, and then I had a, a split with a partner, and I ended up working a festival season through Europe um, for two two seasons, two summer seasons, where we'd be building the um, stage tents kind of thing like you know where the performers the performers were at and then um, we were living in tents in fields pretty much driving through Europe for for, for two summers it was, it was great then after that um I did some some Europe travel and then and then I decided to come over here yeah oh I went to New Zealand as well I went to New Zealand just before I come over here and New, New Zealand's unreal like I loved it over there it's so good I went there for two weeks got a camper van and then moved over to um, to Australia, yeah. Um, I do remember my first solo solo trip. I went to one of the national parks um, here in Tasmania. And I think the only reason why I went at that point on my own was because I, I would usually go with my partner, but we do a lot of house sitting here because we didn't have a permanent home, so we live in the bus. We um, we have a profile on a couple of different websites where um, people can book us in to look after their house and their animals. And we were actually at a house at, at the time and I had some time off work, but she was still at work. So, so I just decided to get up and, and go on my own. It was only a, a two day hike. Um, I do, I, I hiked literally just a few hours the first day and stayed on this lake called Shadow Lake. I think this is in the St. Clair National Park at Shadow Lake. And um, yeah, it was, it was gorgeous. Like, it, it's just, it's so nice camping near the water, you know, like on all my hikes, I always try and find some water 
Like it's, it's, I don't know why, it just seems so much more peaceful. And I guess there's more, there'll be more wildlife there. And yeah, it's just, yeah, I just, I just love being around the water. I can't swim very good though. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the second day, one of the, I got up and did a big climb as well. I did Mount Rufus, you know, where it was a circuit um, hike this was. And um, there was snow up on the peaks and, and all that a lot, so, which I really enjoyed. I hadn't actually done a proper hike in the snow. I think that was the first hike I actually did in the snow. Winter's coming now, um, so I'm looking forward to, to winter camping, actually. I'm looking forward to being in the snow. Really big, big, big change. Um, yeah, it just makes me feel good. Good hiking, you know, I, I just, it's a nice feeling just, just being out there on your own and, and it's so simple, you know, like it, it's real simple, but it just makes you feel great. Like, yeah. The main reason I go on my solo adventures really is probably because my missus won't come with me. <laughs> Um, sometimes she can't make it, you know, and um, and I don't want to. I don't want to not go. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to miss out on these experiences, or you know, uh, sit around waiting for her to come. So I just decide to go out on my own, and and it's nice being on my own, you know. Like I, I, I just have to do everything for myself. I don't have to do something for somebody else. I know that might sound a bit selfish, but it's nice to just just be on my own, on my own, doing everything just purely for myself for my own enjoyment uh, for my own survival like yeah and and it's nice like I do enjoy my own company I do, I do enjoy my own company yeah and and if I'm not at work and I'm not doing this then then what what else should I do like I go to the gym I go to the gym but I don't know it's it's, it's just a different environment you know I, I, I like to be outside in nature I like to see the animals, I like to watch the insects or, you know, even just, even just sitting down and having a cup of tea outside on, on the cold, soggy ground on my own. It's just, I don't know, it's like a clear space, you know? Yeah. When I'm out in, in the bush, I, I try not to think about, um, you know, like, I try not to think about anything, to be honest with you, like, I just, I just like to be there in the moment and looking at what's around me and, and just thinking about what's around me, instead of having to worry about my future or, or worry about work or worry about people, you know, yeah, I, I don't like to think about a lot, just purely what's in front of me. And about the hard, the hard, climb of a mountain I'm about to do or something you know yeah the the influences I've had for going um hiking and camping solo mainly been from probably from some of the YouTube channels I watch to be honest with you um when I was um probably in my early 20s me and a friend would go hiking and camping um, we, we went a few times back in England, but um, that kind of like worn off, the novelty kind of worn off, or we, we probably went on our separate ways. You know, he went into the military and stuff. So, yeah, I just kind of stopped going. And I didn't really, I don't think I'd done any solo camping in the UK. It's only since I've been, actually, I think it's only since I've been in Tasmania. So it's only been like this last year where I've gone on my solo trips. Mm. And uh, I, I do watch a lot of YouTube there's a, there's a couple of people I watch on YouTube, which, um, which really um, encourage me to go out and, and, and do what they're doing, like, you know. Now, now that I've done a few solo camps, um, I, think, I don't think I could not do them now. You know, like, I guess I, I enjoy each one more and more, because I'll, I'll always learn something new or, 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 or see something different, like, you know, and, There'd just be another animal that'll that'll wake me up. Like next time, next time I do my solo camp, every time I go, I seem to be woken up by animals, and it's something different each time. Like so, it's exciting, even though it's irritating. It's exciting to 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 see what new, something new is going to be there. Like see what animal is going to be pissing me off in the middle of the night. 
um, yeah, I don't think I could give it up now. No matter, no matter where I was like, Tasmania is, Tasmania is such a, a luxurious place to go hiking and to camp like, but even if I was on the mainland, I think I'd still, I would definitely still do my solo, solo camps, even though it's probably more dangerous on the mainland, just because of the, um, the lack of water, like it gets real dry in some places you know, and, and, and it's the worst carrying with a huge weight on your back full of water. Yeah, so so no, I, I don't think I don't think I could give it up, especially because I'm invested in gear now. <laughs> I don't know, I invest in in always hiking stuff and camping stuff, and I never use it. Yeah, you do get a sense of of being masculine when you do it, don't you? Um, yeah, I do feel I do feel like I'm surviving on my own. You know, like it's there's nobody else to take care of you or, 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 or to do something for you. Like it just, you just feel, you just feel like a survivor and, and you're doing it, you're doing it all yourself. Um, also, also I just, it's nice to just have my own thoughts and, and nothing else to, to interrupt it. Yeah. And, and, and I can go out and, and do exactly what I want to do. It, it does just feel good. It just feels good. I, I, it's really difficult for me to put this into words. Like going out alone, you just feel good doing it and you, and you feel like you've accomplished something, you know? And then you, and then you get to come home and you're going back into your busy life, which, which is a completely different atmosphere compared to when you're out there on your own. Like, you know, it's just, it's just a different feeling. Best part of my solo trips, without a shadow of a doubt, is when I get to the top of a mountain. Like if I've been, if I've been hiking all day and, and there's like a big ass climb, mo most of my hikes will involve a mountain or, or something which you, has like a huge view coming off it, you know? So um, as soon as I get to the top and I know I've worked my butt off to get there, I just, it's just so good to just, to just look out there and you can see the whole world, it feels like, you know, like you can see so far and it's just feels so dramatic and feel like you've really accomplished something on your own. And then, and then I'll probably, if it's not too windy, well, even if it's windy, I'll probably try and sit down and have a bite to eat up there and just withstand the terrible weather if it is, or, or if it's sunny, you know, like, I, either way, they're great. Obviously, I prefer a nice, clear view. But, but yeah, even if even if the weather's terrible, it just feels so good once you get to the top. You get you get a little sense of disappointment because you can't really see the the fantastic view, but you still know what what you've just accomplished, and you deserve like I don't know a sweet treat or something. It's nice to just have a bit of sugar or sit down and have a cup of tea. Like, yeah, that's that's probably my favorite part. Uh, uh as another, I'd probably equally enjoy creating fire but it, it's really struggle it's a real struggle to make fire in Tassie because you got the restrictions at the um, national parks they don't really allow fires or any naked flames so I normally cook on a, on a gas burner which is a bit irritating like it's, it's a much better feeling cooking on a fire but um, I, I still get to do a lot a lot of camping where I can cook on a fire just not in the not in the national parks and sometimes they have fire bans because of the bushfire seasons here which in Tassie is, isn't as bad as the mainland like there was quite a big chunk of the year a couple of years ago up in Queensland and New South Wales where they had fire bans for ages so there was no fires going on there it's just far too dangerous. There's a bird in in Australia I'm not sure what part of Australia I think it's some type of I think it's like was it the kite, the, the kite eagle or something? I, I know I haven't got the right name for the bird, but it will see where the fire is and, and it will it will, it will be swarming around to get all the like um, mice and that, like which are trying to vacate the fire. And when the fire is dying out, it will actually pick the burning stick up and move it to another place so the fire starts again. It does it so it can, um, so all the mice and the, the, the shrews and everything run out from the grass and it can just come and eat them. Like 
as soon as there's fire, because they're back burn here, so they burn all the trees and everything just to keep vegetation down so the wildfires don't take over. And it will see the humans going out creating these fires. And when the fire's dying down, it will go come over and pick a burning stick up and chuck it somewhere else so the fire starts again. So clever. To be honest with you, I, I can't really say a favorite season to go all my solo hikes because the hikes I have done previously, like this last few years, have been in Queensland. And you don't really get a cold winter. You know, if, if I was to hike in Queensland, my favorite season would be winter because it's cool, but it, it's not cold, you know, it's nowhere near cold. Like in the day, it will be between, between 19 and 25 degrees Celsius in the winter, you know? So uh, winters, we, we've just come into autumn now in Tasmania. Um, I haven't, so I haven't done any really cold camping here and I'll be doing a lot of solo hikes through the winter because my partner is not, interested at all in doing cold hikes like she's from Queensland so she's used to the heat um so yeah I'll be doing I'll be doing a lot of um winter camping here which I'm really looking forward to but I can't really say if it's my favorite I definitely don't like hiking in the summer of Queensland because it's just far too hot you know as soon as the sun hits the tent you're sweltering in there like you're in a pool of your own sweat and then um and then if you're hiking through the through the day it's, it's just far too much. I will do the odd climb here and there in Queensland, but I will leave before daylight, you know, like in the coolest temperatures. Yeah. I wouldn't say I take any, I don't take any equipment with me to protect me from dangerous wildlife. Like the only things here you probably got are snakes in Tassie and, and probably when I travel down from Queensland, the only, the only dangerous animals you're really gonna see are snakes. Um, and I don't think you can get anti-venom to take with you. And, you know, I've never really, never really thought about that. When I, when I first come over here, one of my biggest worry was snakes. But I think that's like most, most people around the world always think that, that Australia is just snakes everywhere and spiders everywhere. Like um, I've seen some dangerous spiders but yeah, you just try and stay away from, from the snakes. Like, you know, what, what I, I saw a red belly black snake at Mount Solitary in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. And uh, he was literally like stalking us. He, he, wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wasn't moving, but he was just like upright watching you, you know, which was pretty um, nerve wracking. I don't think they're just attack you unless you're causing a threat. Um, if I was in the NT, uh, Northern Territory or Western Australia, it would be different. Haven't been there yet, but they've got like crocodiles and and all sorts. I keep I keep saying to my partner, uh, I worry about going up there. But she, she she used to live in Northern Queensland. She said there's crocodiles everywhere. She just avoids them. If you just be like chilling on the beach, like sunbathing, she just like you know walk around them. <laughs> the only reason actually why I took my first aid certificate was so was for these hikes because you really are out there on your own and and you you, you just don't know what's going to happen and if I did get a snake bite uh, I've learned how to dress a snake bite now you know but yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the only dangerous dangerous wildlife I would come across down here oh and mozzies mozzies are just irritating you know mosquitoes they're 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 probably my biggest hate of this country is their mosquitoes. They seem to get me real good. They, they like the English blood. Uh, the Tazi Devils, I don't, I don't think they would even get close to you. I haven't actually seen one in a while. When I did my first solo trip and I camped at Shadow Lake, I actually woke up. I, I explained to one of the guys at work the noises of it. Like I, I was petrified when I woke up in that tent. Um, to these noises, like growly, not growly, they're like more hissy noises kind of thing, like a cat hissing or, or something like that. And it was, uh, they were just having a possum Tazzy Devil fight, like literally right next to my head. I was so scared. I, I woke up, like my heart was just racing. I was awake, woke up trying to find my torch now. I, 
I couldn't get out another look. I was just, I, I didn't have a clue what it was. I had no idea. But um, I don't think they will get close to you if they know you're there. Like I've never seen one, you know? So, so I wouldn't, it's a good question, but I don't think they're dangerous. Maybe I should probably look into it. <laughs> they're very small, they're very small animals. Um, I actually got lost on the last solo trip I took. I didn't actually do a camping trip. I, I uh, went up one of the bluffs. I forgot what the place was called, but it's in Tassie. And the weather conditions were terrible. Like you, you just couldn't, as soon as you got into the clouds, like you just couldn't see, you, you could hardly see in front of you. And um, I was trying to follow this trail, which you could see like a light trail here and there in places. And um, it come to a point where I just couldn't, I just couldn't see the trail at all. And, and I did get a little worried, but I just, I just said to myself, I'll just go like another 50 meters or so. And, and if I, if I can't see the trail, then I'm going to backtrack and, and head back to, towards the way I came. Like, um, and I had to do that. Yeah. I had to call that trip, uh, you know, bring it to an end kind of thing, which was, which was pretty disappointing, but you know, it's, there's no point going, going if you just can't see. If, it, if the weather conditions get bad enough, you're better off either just staying still and pitching your tent or something or, or heading back. I haven't used a compass. To be honest with you, I don't even know how to use one. <laughs> I, should, um, I should invest some time and, and learn, which I probably will do. It'll be a smart, smart idea. Um, normally, I'd, I'd use maps on my phone. You know, like there's some there's some good map apps out there, which are, are pretty reliable. You know, you just if I, I try not to use it, but if it really comes to it, then I'll use it. Um, it knows exactly which way you're going. It knows which way your phone's pointing and everything. So, yeah, and you can download offline maps as well. So I can da I've downloaded the whole of Tasmania, which is ideal. But yeah, I would like that's another thing I'd like to do is is take things back to the way they were, you know, and, and try and learn to do this stuff without technology. If the phone breaks, I'm screwed. I have recently started um, doing some CrossFit training at, at a local gym, which I'm really getting into. It's a completely different type of training than I've ever done before. And I think it'll actually come in real handy with my hikes. You know, I think I'll be able to push myself further each time um also i would go away like when i'm not working or at a house here because bear in mind a lot of the time i'm looking after people's animals so i can't actually do a lot outside that area um because i live in a bus i would just take my home up into the mountains and and spend weekends up in the mountains like cooking over fire or all that sort of thing like it's similar to i mean i know it's not camping but it's like more like glamping i guess uh, yeah, it's my, it's the way of, it's my way of life, really, it's, it's, it's my home, so I feel comfortable doing that, going up there in the mountains and just, just chilling up there, you know. I'm going to keep posting a lot of videos to my YouTube channel, like I want to, I want to post more and more, you know, like I really enjoy, I really enjoy going out and doing these trips, and I'm really enjoying actually just editing them you know like it takes it takes probably the same amount of time to edit one of these videos as it does for the time I'm out there so if I'm out there for like two days it will take me two days to edit it just for a 10 to 15 minute video like mm, the big reason for that's probably because I'm still learning it so much like the video editing software but I do plan to grow my channel like I would really like I would really like it to grow you know like I'm 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 going to try and invest a lot of my time into it. Um, and, I'm, and I would like to keep the same, the same kind of videos going, you know, like I want to do my solo camping or, or camping with my partner. Like it'll always be camping or, or it will have something, something to do with it, whether it's just day hikes or um, just like simple videos of wildlife, some of the bugs I see or the birds I see. Um, even just like recently I've been uploading just a few drone shots kind of thing because I've been able to get away and do multi-day hikes um, recently. So 
I've just been just been adding little bits like that. Um, maybe in the future it, it may change a little bit. Like when I have a family and stuff, there'll probably be, you know, I'll still go hiking and camping, but my kids, my kids will come with me in some of the videos, you know, which will be a complete completely new like it'll be a lot different but i will still do the solar hikes and there'll be solar hikes in there you know so i'll always look for a body of water preferably fresh water so i can actually drink from it um and a mountain i i i just love to climb like you know so whenever i'm searching for a hike i'll probably First, I'll find the mountain, and then I'll either figure out a hike that that will loop around the mountain, or or go over to a couple of different peaks or something. Um, preferably in a circuit. A lot of the mountains here already have already have hikes routed out, you know. So, so you just kind of like following following a trail, or if there's a trail which I don't really like the look of. I'll try and link it up to another trail. So, so I'm doing like multiple parts of multiple trails and, and try and link them around to each other kind of thing. That's a good thing about some of the apps, the map apps I use is that you can really see every little track in it. Sometimes it even shows you animal tracks, which is annoying because you just can't walk so many animal tracks. Um, if you're planning on going out on a solo trip, it's probably best to have done some sort of trip with somebody else before. Like, that's what I've done anyway. Um, you'll probably kind of like get a feel of the, the stuff you need to take with you or, or it's a bit, bit of like a safety net to begin with. And um, I would always take something, if, you, if you're going out on your own, I'd always take something as like um, a safety precaution. Like I always take a whistle. I'll always pack a whistle with me just in case I do need to be found, like I can just blow that whistle. And like if, if there's, there will be a missing person alert kind of thing and there'll be such party out for you. If, if my partner doesn't hear from me for however many days I plan to go for, something, something will be, so some people will be sent out to search for me and I'll, and I'll just have a whistle. I always take like a lighter and a, and a flint. So I try and make my fires with a flint just because it's another good feeling to do it. Like it just, it's like another survival kind of vibe, you know? So I'll always try and do that, but I'll always, and then I've got a lighter for backup as well. I know I've kind of probably gone on a little bit of a tangent then, but I've forgotten what you asked me. <laughs> I was real hesitant. Like, I feel like that my YouTube channel has literally only just started like, I, I don't have many subscribers at all and, uh, and I've only been posting to it for for a year or so and, and I've only been posting seriously on it for maybe six months or something. Um, I just felt like it was, it, I probably wasn't ready for it, you know, like. And then I actually decided not to not to join the show. Um, it must have been like a few weeks to a month or something that I went by and I'd spoken to a few people and they'd encouraged me to, to give it a go. So I got back in contact and, um, and yeah, then I, then I just decided to do it. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed the trailer. It, it, um, it's exciting. Like, you know, you, you managed to make it like action, action packed trailer. It, 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 it was real good, yeah. It's nice to see all, all of the videos I've created down into the, just like, I forgot how long it was. But like, I think it's just like a minute, a minute, about a minute or a minute and something, two minutes. It's two minutes long. And it's nice to just see the, all the adventurous things in one, you know? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize how, how adventurous I was until I saw that. <laughs> yeah, it was a great job.